Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part 6 of my introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll give our player some health and add some dangerous obstacles to start making things more challenging. First, we'll create a new object for the player to avoid. As before, we click to create an object, then select the sprite. It's important to give the new object an appropriate name so that we can refer to it easily later. The spikes can be cloned to add more to the level. Now we need to give the player a reason to avoid them. Click the player object to open the behaviors. First, we add a number block to store the player's current health. We'll set the label to say health. This is just to make the logic easier to understand in the future. We set the value to three, so the player will be able to take damage three times. In order to trigger some damage when the player touches the spikes, we'll add a collision trigger. For the type, we'll select spikes. Leave the object selection set to any object, which means this will trigger when we touch any of the spike objects in the game. We want to reduce the health by one each time we touch the spikes, and the simplest way to do that here is to just add the value negative one to the player's health. To do that, we'll add another number and set its value to negative one and label it damage. Now we just need to link them all up. Connecting the collision block's hit output to the damage block's get input will cause the damage block to be activated when the player touches the spikes. Next, we'll connect the damage block's output to the health block's add input. Now when the player touches a spike, the value negative one will be sent into the health block's add input decrementing the health value by one. Let's quickly test it to make sure it works as expected. Okay, it seems to work, but we should display the health so the player can see it. From the GUI section, we can select a label, which will display a label on the screen. Since we start with three health, we'll set the starting value to three. In the dropdown, we can select a font, a color, and adjust the size. We can add a second label to let the player know that this is the health value being displayed. Connecting the health output to the label's value input will update the text to display the new value whenever our health is updated. Once we close the behavior window, we can drag the labels around to arrange them. Okay, another quick test to make sure everything is working. Now we just need to restart the game when the player's health reaches zero. To check the player's health, we'll use a filter from the logic and math section and connect the health to the filter's in input. We'll check for values less than one, and if the test passes, we restart the game using a restart game block from the game flow section. Now when our health reaches zero, the game will restart and we can try again from the beginning. Next, we just need to test it and make sure everything works the way we expect. Okay, looks good. In the next video, we'll add some sound effects and items to collect. Thanks for watching.